Hello, welcome back to our month of PlayStation memories. I'm Rob, and this is Holly. Hey guys! And today, Holly, you've bought some very interesting things to show us. Yes. Some, some weird PlayStation peripherals from the past. Yeah, so I went into the PlayStation library, yeah. which is an actual thing, and I grabbed some really weird stuff, some stuff that never even came out in the West, and I'm going to show you each bit one by one, and I'm going to see how many of them you kind of know, or might cool. have even seen before. Let's, let's uh, do it. So I'm going to start with one that never actually came out in the West. Yeah. It was released in 1999 in Japan, um, but most PlayStation gamers have heard of it and okay. were always a bit sad. What is this then? Oh, it's a Pocket Station. Yeah, so the Pocket Station never actually came out. It wow. came in two colours, white I've and crystal. Even, I've never even seen one of these. So I've got both in this box, actually. Oh, wow. So there is a crystal Pocket Station, which you can play with. This but I have to put it back because yeah. they'll come and get me. This if... is a momentous occasion. And there's, there it there's is. the white. So these never came out. They did really well in Japan in the end, although people think at first people didn't react to it terribly well. And that might have led to why it never came to the West but promotional material was being made and stuff was happening. In fact, um, Final Fantasy VIII, which is my favorite Final Fantasy, uh, the Pocket Station game with the chocolate remember that. was still built into the game because they thought it was going to come to the West. I remember seeing on the manual of Final Fantasy VIII that you could take your chocobo and you could he could live inside here and you could do little adventures with him. Plug it into wow. PlayStation, download the game to and, the Pocket Station, and off you go. And I always wanted to have a little adventure with Choco because it was... Oh. And I never got to do it. Never came out in the West. Oh, but if you'd is. imported one of them, it would have still worked. Yeah, I would. I so there are forums where people have imported them from different countries uh, where they've managed to find them and they have worked with certain mm. games that came to the West. Wow. Give that back. <laughs> I will get in trouble. In fact, That's I even amazing. still have some of the, the Japanese leaflets that would have come out in Japan oh. just talking all about what it could do. Look at that. Yeah. Look these are all that. these have all been kept absolutely pristine. Yes. So I thought Pocket Station was a good place to start. It's like a restaurant menu. A menu for games, that you, delicious games mm. that you were not able to enjoy, just to make it even better. That's how it would plug in to your PlayStation 1. PlayStation. There you go. Right, what yeah. should we look at next? I don't know. What is next? I can see some amazing kind of looking... It's all down here. You guys can't see it, but there's like a massive pile of stuff. Some some kind of pads that look weird. Some okay. really weird looking pads. Bring one of those weird looking pads up. What is that? Um, so this came out of PlayStation 1. Yeah. This is the ASCII one-handed grip. So it's the ASCII grip. Okay. This was for basically for RPG games. Uh, and you could play with just one hand. So all the buttons on a DualShock would be mapped to this. So you could play with just That's one cool. hand. I don't know what you want to do with the other hand. <laughs> Swing a pretend sword. Eat it's, cereal? Yeah. It's like... Hands where I can see them. It's like an early... Yeah. It's like an early PS move, almost, isn't it? Like the nunchuck on the PS and move. And these still sell now, so... Um, to, to, to people like... Look at special effect, for example. Yeah. Special effect custom build controllers for people who have disabilities. But um, the ASCII controller was, was able for everyone to use it. So. I was going to say, it does remind me kind of like a, of a, a customised kind of special effect style thing. So some of the guys who still use these and really love them have said that they are quite difficult to master, but once you get used to it, mm. they are brilliant. And I can imagine playing an RPG, especially something like Final Fantasy VII, where yeah. it's turn-based, so there's no rush. So there's circle and X on the back. Yeah. And then you've got triangle and square on the front. we start and select. Yeah, there you go. One-handed that's, controller. That's, that's very cool. Your DualShock in one you hand. You put it away down there. Um, right, talking about controllers. Yes. What else have you got? Your favourite. You got really excited when <gasps> you saw this. A this multi tab Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, also I have, love these things. I also have the PS2 one as well. Oh, wow. Which looks like a mini PS2, which I think is really cute. We do just kind of take it for granted now that we can just sync up as many, can, well, seven odd controllers onto a PS3 or a PS4, but if you wanted to play more than two players back in PS1 and PS2 days, you had to plug in a multi-tap. So the good thing was that only one of you needed to sort of own it. Yeah. That's what we and my friends did. So my friend, uh, my friend Darren had it. I and then we'd always, Darren would always bring the multi-tap so we could all play together. I remember going around to my friend's house and just, you know, packing my memory card, packing a multi-tap. I'd regularly forget my memory card and it was Ooh, a mega person. disaster. Oh, I forgot I it. had one just for going travelling. I had a special travel memory card, so if I went out with my friends, I, I didn't have to leave my, take my important memory card with all my good saves on it. So I had a, a party memory card. That's a good card. idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, I love Oh, the memories. Uh, yeah. I love how they kind of, 
designed to fit the console they go with. That looks like a little mini PS2, Beautiful. doesn't it? It's great. A, B, there it C, is. And D. The multi taps. Yay! Play together. So moving on, looking at controllers again. Okay. I thought I'd bring out these two, which are very normal. The what's plural for computer the mouse? The mices. The mouses. The mouses. The mices. call them computer mice. Computer mice. <laughs> these PlayStation are mice. The PlayStation One and PlayStation Two. So the PlayStation One One came out. It was actually available for launch in Japan. And this one kind of was compatible, mainly used point and click adventures, like yeah. Mist, for example, mm -hmm. was one of the ones that struck me. I loved Mist. I still love that game even now. Why I'm kind of excited for Witness. So this came out. It also came with a key, it came the, the mouse mat as well. Yeah. So it all kind of came in a box together, but sadly, I couldn't find those in the library. So we've just got this one. However, the PS2 one. Yes. An only, even dinkier mouse. It only came with the keyboard and the Linux software, which okay. basically turned any non-slim PS2 into a Linux computer. Nice. Uh, so I thought that was quite cool, that it was part of the Linux bundle for PlayStation. Lovely mice. Yay. This one's really small. Look, I've got quite small hands anyway, and that one just about fits in mine. Yeah. It's like proportion, isn't it? This is going to look tiny in my hand. You think? My one. massive clown hand. There you go. So this is also used in games like Quake, um, because people good decided for first that person shooters. first person yeah. shooters, the mouse was a really good idea. There we go. Well, this okay. has been an exciting trip down memory lane. Now, is uh, before I came to PlayStation, I worked at Namco. Yeah. So while I was at Namco, I worked on Tekken Tag Tournament 2 and Soul Calibur. And we did a lot of fighting tournaments. With the fight stick. Thing. This is one of the yeah. original ones from Namco. <laughs> it was a PlayStation 1 fight stick, and it's still considered to be one of the best fight sticks it on the market. It is like a classic design, isn't it? It's made by a company called Hori, who are still making fight sticks today, but I've been to plenty of Tekken tournaments, and I've still seen some of the best players, even in the UK, prefer to use their still original Namco fight that sticks. one, yeah. Uh, compatible all the way up to PlayStation 3 using a PS2 to PS3 adapter. That's cool. There you go. Wow. And I guess we'll be looking to have some more fighting games on PS4 maybe in the future. We know Mortal Kombat is coming. Um, I'm interested what Harada-san is up to because I know he announced some stuff for Tekken, but at the moment it's arcade stuff, I think. So I want to know if we'll be seeing these for PS4. Mm, that would be cool. Yeah. Lost on me, though, as I'm absolutely awful at fighting games. I'm terrible at them, mm. but uh, I've heard on good authority from lots of Tekken fans that this is still one of the best yeah. controllers out there, despite its age. You ready for next? So this is probably one of the biggest yeah. PlayStation 1 peripherals I've found. Okay. <sighs> Look at the size of that. It's like you could fly a plane with this. So, right, it's not quite nice. Steel Battalion. I don't know if you remember Steel Battalion, which came in like the world's biggest box and had like a full, basically, you could pilot a Gundam. So I'm not listening to you, Holly. I'm just ooh, You've got, uh, easing those back and so forth. So this is the PlayStation 1 analog sticks. These are not ooh. called flight sticks. In fact, the flight sticks were a third party peripheral, again, by Hori. Um, obviously one of the main games that this was used for was Ace Combat. Ace Combat. And any I mean, game amazing. that had compatibility with this would have a little sticker on the back of the box for PlayStation 1 that says that it is PlayStation Analog Stick compatible. It still feels really good. I love the kind of the material there. It's like an actual gear stick. I love how big the buttons are, and yeah. then you might miss them. So this next one is another controller, okay. for PlayStation 1. Now, you didn't recognise it, but it's from Namco again, but okay. I recognise it as one of the most kind of weird, crazy, but very popular controllers, right? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, that thing. What right. is this thing, and this what is, is it used for? Uh, the Educate, Negicon. Educate the Negicon from Namco was really used for racing games. When it first came out, it was sort of critically people didn't think it was going to work. Okay. But if you speak to any kind of really old retro gamers, they say for things like Ridge Racer, this is, it doesn't get better than this. Maybe the Jog Con, which came out so for Ridge Racer look. 4, I think, which is also from Namco, but you can twist it. What does the twisting do, though? So for people- Is that supposed to help you of, drive? Yeah, it was kind of the way <laughs> so you right held the controller there. that made a difference. It's like I see it in motorbike games, maybe. Revving so the it's engine. It's a bit like with Tekken players. So. A very hardcore Tekken player that uses the pad will hold the pad differently to how someone who plays yeah. with games normally. So if it was a normal controller, a Tekken fan will hold the controller like this instead of like that. Yeah. So they can get better access to the buttons. And it's a little bit similar with this. So people as they were, were enjoying Ridge Racer games will find different ways of holding it and these would be your I guess if that's controls. accelerating, being able to accelerate like that rather than uh, like 
giving your thumb a massive cramp. It's but it probably is actually a very one good of those kind of best known weird controllers, but was considered to be really, really good for games like Ridge Racer. That is cool. So this little oh. thing, this is the PS1 combo. So you could buy this screen separately or With together this, in a box. Oh, I forgot how small this was. So this is the PS1, like the, the slim version so of the original the PlayStation. So the PlayStation 1. It's actually called PS1 on the front. Yeah, PS1. Um, so when you say PlayStation 1, it's, you want to try and not get them confused. However, if you do this, you've opened it. I have opened, sorry. You've played Let's with close the... close it. Right. <laughs> so this screen basically was the five inch LCD screen, which you could buy separately uh, so that you didn't need to use a television, which now seems crazy thanks to things like remote play, PlayStation yeah. TV, or even like using bleh, Sony mobiles to, to you know remote play. This was that idea. This was remote play back yeah, then. Look how was portable that, that is. So the screen just clips onto the back, and you can carry on playing Final Fantasy VII or Metal Gear Solid. Or Final Fantasy VIII. Or Final Fantasy VIII. I'm actually playing. Don't, don't put that Final Fantasy VIII down. I'm playing Final Fantasy VIII on my Vita right now on the train. All I do is play cards, triple triad. That's all I do but, all day. Yeah, I thought that was uh, incredible. It shows not only kind of how small the PlayStation One got from yeah. its original kind of console, but that. Something like that, which was released so many years ago, is a predecessor to what we now consider to be key features of the PlayStation 4. Yeah. Which is the ability to not use the main TV. I mean, just the size of the screen as well, the fact that it's five inches. That's kind of like, you know, I'm mobile phone foreshadowing is. the Vita, isn't it? It really is. But you know, most tablets and mobile phones now will come with a bigger than five inch screen. Yeah. And we play a lot of those same games on our mobile devices as well now. It's come full I'm circle. getting really, I'm really enjoying all the Ah, oh, so yeah. many memories! Ah. Okay, this one. Now, I owned a game that my parents thought me and my sister could play together okay. uh, called Britney's Dance Beat on nice. PS2. But it meant that I had to have a very particular oh. peripheral. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Dance Mat. I had one of these did and I was... Did you have this plastic one or did I, you have one of the solid ones? I had one of... No, I didn't have a solid one, but it didn't have this kind of glossy sheen on it. It was kind of like a more of a rough material. So these came but, in a million different... Sorry. Million, you can smell it. It smells like, like memories. Plastic. So these came in these plastic ones, which were kind of used at home, just for like a lot of younger kids, I yeah, guess, to play on, like or that. if it was just for a party thing. If you were really into games like DDR, you could actually buy the solid state ones, which were almost identical to ones you'd get in the arcades. And these are the ones that people could have if they were really into DDR. But loads of different games these days. I remember trying to play Final Fantasy VIII using my dance mat <laughs> and being so excited when it worked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had Britney's Dance Beat. I think I had a Spice Girls game as well. And I did have I DDR. I can't remember, to my shame, I can't remember the name of the dance game I had. But I was really, really good at it. I'm sure really, you were. Really, really good. I probably wasn't. But uh, I do remember having me down in the living room yeah. and getting really upset when my mum changed from carpet to laminate flooring mm -hmm. and it just sort of slid along oh, as man. I was playing. Well, all those other controllers you showed me about, you know, hardcore fighting gamers playing on their controllers, hardcore this racing games. This is my hardcore. But again Hardcore now, dancing peripherals. Look at dancing today. So games like Just Dance, thanks to things like PlayStation cameras. You don't need a mat. You don't even need a mat no. anymore. And it's not just about where your feet are going. So if you remember watching the hardcore DDR people in the arcades, yeah. they just hold them to the back bar and look like they were sweating and not very happy. <laughs> None of that anymore, because now would, it's about... I would hold on to my belt to make sure my like trousers didn't fall down. It looked like I was just river More, dancing. Yeah, river dancing. Yeah. That was a little bit of like... So now, thanks to games like Just Dance and motion tracking, it's not about where your feet are anymore, it's about where your whole body is. Yeah. So again, just that evolution of where, at the time, this seemed revolutionary. It was the best. Uh, and it was a predecessor to something much bigger. So I, I think I'm going to finish with probably my favourite of them all. OK. And I didn't even know this thing existed until I was in the library and someone from research and development said, oh, do you know what this is? Uh, it's the Net Eurosi. <gasps> I know what that is. No, I didn't. So I'm going to get the Net Eurosi now. That is exciting. Right, one this moment. is going to be exciting. Is it the whole, you've actually got the whole thing there. <gasps> wow. Man. That's still sealed. Yep. That is sealed in its box. And there the, there's the actual thing itself. I'm back. Wow. So hidden behind all okay, of this. Okay, so 
Explain, Holly, the Net Eurosi for people who don't know what it is. This I thought was just incredibly cool. So the Net Eurosi is a matte black PlayStation 1. It was released in 1997 and was actually available across all three territories, so Japan, Europe and NA, which yep. is where anyone remembers PlayStation 1 was quite rare. Uh, it was about $750, which is actually really expensive if you think what that must be back in 1997. Yeah. But it was a dev kit. That's the most crucial thing, isn't it? It's essentially... This one's Japanese. You can essentially make your own games. Yeah, it. so it was not necessarily the full sort of dev, so if you were a big studio working on games, yeah. the support you kind of would have got would have been a little bit different. But this did allow you to make your own games. Which, you know, can you consider what indie devving is now and how yeah. indie dev works for it's PlayStation? Amazing. We were actually doing it with the PlayStation 1. And what happened was the best kind of games that were made were actually put on the demo discs and released in magazines like Official PlayStation. I remember I used to read Official PlayStation magazine back in the original PlayStation days. And each month they'd have like a little feature, the, be the best Net Neurosi games that month. Yeah. And it was so cool. And, and I pleaded with my mum to get me one. But so this, this is, is the software. Cool. So not only do you have your net Eurosi, so Eurosi actually means let's do it together in Japanese. And I love that kind of stuff. That's like cool. Katamari obviously means sticky ball. <laughs> uh, which is why I think Touch My Katamari on the Vita is Touch it, My Sticky, sticky Balls. Ball. And obviously uh, Tekken is Iron Fist, so yeah. king of the Iron Fist tournament. So I kind of uh, I love all that stuff. So this was the software that you would install on your PC. And then here is all the original documentation oh, that would wow. have come with your net Eurosi. So these are things like the application form, this is where you put your credit card details, something you just never dream of doing now. Just It'd be interesting to see how many kind of developers that are in games development now as kids played around with the Net Eurosi on, on PlayStation. I'd love to know. In fact, if them. you know anyone who ever used the Net Eurosi and is now developing full time, I'd love to know because I just with the way PlayStation looks at indies and devs now, and it's mm. like, it's such a revolutionary, it's pushing the way forward. And actually, when I found this, I was like, wait, wait, we've been doing this for the longest time. And while it wasn't necessarily done with PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3, there was the Linux for PlayStation 2, which did allow some kind of devving. Yeah. Not in the same way. Um, but the fact that I found it fully boxed, everything in here is still in its wrapping, still That's sealed. Amazing. The software is still sealed. I mean, this sealed. is an original, this is a Japanese model this as well. Is a Japanese so one. If you want to have a look at the. Uh, the Japanese and it is that matte on the back feel to it as mm. well, which is really sets it apart. So when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh, cool, a matte black PS4, a PS1." But we released a million colours of PlayStation One. Yeah. Um, but I just think we also love the controller special. as well. The original PlayStation controller that no before analog. before analog sticks came out, the original digital ones, and they're so light. So tiny. There's nothing to them. No. They're not battery powered. They're, there's no Bluetooth capability no, like, in them. There's, there's no, no rumble. No, there's no triggers or anything. It's just the buttons. It is in its most purest form. Yeah. Um, so I thought this was a lovely thing to end with was the Net Eurosi. It is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, hopefully I got all my facts right, but I'm sure everyone will point it out if I got anything I'm wrong. I'm sure everyone will correct um, you in the comments. But there's some of the weirdest and what I think to be some of the coolest, yeah. and some of the ones that probably give you the most memories, which, mm. when you have 20 years of history, I think is, yeah. It's crucial. I like games. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching, everyone. That is our look at some of the weirdest peripherals and cool stuff um, from PlayStation's history, the Pocket Station. You can't keep it, Holly. You're if not allowed. You have one each, you <laughs> no one would ever know. Please comment, please like the video, and please subscribe so you don't miss anything else from our month of PlayStation memories.